Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Okay, in this video, we're going to start talking about uh, exploratory data analysis in a lot more detail. And specifically, we're going to look at uh, visualizing variation in single variables. Uh, so recall in the, in the introduction we talked about that there are really two main tools that we work with in exploratory analysis. That those are data visualization and then transformation. So for the first part here, we'll talk all about data visualization. And we'll break that down um, e even to first looking at variation in single variables, right? So remember one of our questions is what's going on? What, what's the behavior uh, and the characteristics uh, that exist in single variables. And so we'll look at variation in single variables. And uh, we'll look at those in terms of data type as well. We'll first look at discrete categorical variables in this video. And in the next video, we'll look at continuous variables. So let's go ahead and load our tidyverse package. Um, and we'll start by working on discrete categorical variables, all right? Um, the data set we're going to work with is called the Diamonds data set. Uh, let's go ahead and just open this up and have a look at the Diamonds data set. Uh, this will load automatically with, with Tidyverse whenever you load Tidyverse. Um, so we have a data set that uh, has 53, almost 54,000 rows. So it's a, it's a very sizable data set. And then, um, you know, we've got about uh, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 10 variables. Uh, and so these tell us different things about, about our, our diamonds. So in this data set, each row represents a diamond. Carrots, you're probably familiar with. Uh, cut is a descriptive, ideal, premium, good, very good, fair, et cetera. So it's a, a quality characteristic. We have color labelings, uh, which are assigned a letter. And then clarity also um, are designated. Each diamond is designated a, a code to represent its clarity. Um, and then there's depth and table, which are uh, dimensional characteristics of, of the diamond. We have X, Y, and Z, which are dimensional measurements on the diamond. And then we have the price of the diamond. Um, so just a number of different characteristics, both, both quantitative and uh, descriptive or categorical, uh, as well as the price of our, of our diamonds. Okay, so that orients you to the data set. Um, so again, uh, for, for this video, we'll focus on discrete categorical variables. Um, so we're going to be focused on cut, color, and clarity. Okay, cut, color, and clarity. Cut. Let's just jot those down here. OK. Our, so these are our categorical variables. And so uh, one of the first things that we can do uh, is just look at some summary statistics. right? So for categorical variables, the summary statistics really are just counts. We want to know how much of each category um, exists in, in the data. And so we can just kind of use the, the, the piping syntax here to, to just filter down to, to cut color and clarity. And then we can use this summary function, which is really handy. Uh, and it'll work uh, based on the, the data type. So whenever we pass it a discrete variable or a categorical variable, um, it automatically knows just to return counts. So we see that we filter down to cut color and clarity, and then we get the various counts here uh, for each one. So for, for cut, it looks like we have five values. Remember, our goal here is just to get a sense of what's going on with each of these categorical variables. So for cut, there are five different, five different values, fair, good, very good, premium, and ideal. Uh, fair, there's very few of, only about 1,600, all the way up to over 21,000 of ideal cut. Um, so these are not evenly represented in the data set. There's quite a few more as you go through the different uh, cut categories. Color similarly uh, has seven values, uh, D through J. And so we got um, you know quite a range of values. Looks like the largest is just over 11,000. The smallest is down here at J, which is about 2,800. Um, and then they're just kind of mixed in in there. It doesn't we can notice that E and F are are similar in size, 97, 9800, and, and 9500. And then clarity, the clarity classifications also has seven. Note there's an other category that has 2,500. 
Um, and then these are sorted um, actually in order. So there's about 13,000 of the SI1 clarity code uh, all the way down to, to the, the 3600 for VVS1 and then 2500 just marked as other. Um, so just kind of uh, gives you a sense of, of what's going on. So, so you can get your counts there. Um, but the, the really the best way to, to digest these counts is to create a bar chart. Right, so we'll go ahead and create a bar chart. So let's call ggplot. We'll go ahead and, and put the um, data set uh, in the ggplot line, diamonds. And so we're gonna call geom bar and our mapping then, um, we can just put each one of these into, uh, into the aesthetic. So first we can look at cut and this will give us a, a bar chart of cut. And so if we pop that out, uh, again, what we saw earlier over here in the, in the numeric tabular summary is reflected again in the, in the bar chart, which hopefully would be the case. So fair, there, you know, there's a very small amount of fair uh, compared to say ideal, which, which obviously kind of dominates the data set. And then uh, premium and very good are, are pretty close. They're within about a, a couple of thousand of each other here, right? So, we see that the, the vertical axis, again, is the count on a bar chart. We discussed that uh, in the visualization section. So um, just, you know, kind of a nice, a nice representation of, of the data, nice stair steps. Um, and I think the main takeaway here is that um, ideal, the ideal category for cut is the predominant one and fair is relatively small and they just kind of stair step in between there. Um, we can also assume here, and this is true if you look at the documentation, that these are in order of uh, kind of desirableness. So fair is kind of the lowest quality, and then they go up to good and very good, premium, and then ideal obviously is sort of the perfect, the perfect uh, cut that you'd, you'd be looking for. Okay, so we have a, a, a lot in terms of cut, our data set has a lot of very good diamonds in it. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind uh, whenever we think about modeling. Uh, particularly on price, we might assume, one, one question, and we won't investigate this right now, but we might assume that an ideal cut diamond uh, would be higher priced than a fair cut diamond. Um, so in other words, something with a better cut would cost more than something with a, with a worse cut. And so that's a probably reasonable assumption that we'd want to validate when we get to looking at variables together. Um, I might jot that down as a question. Does cut, uh, does price differ as we look at cut? Um, so that would so be a perfectly good question. Whenever we get to modeling, you'd, you'd want to think about that. Would it make sense to kind of bucket our diamonds by cut um, if, say, we were wanting, wanting to model price, right? Um, so that's an example of how exploratory analysis just continues to generate more questions. Does, does this difference uh, change price? And certainly, you've got more data points in the ideal category. Uh, so if you took an average price or something over the data set, it might be influenced by, by the cut. So I've copied our ggplot call here um, that we use so that we can look at color and, and we'll want to do clarity as well. Uh, so here's color. Again, the, the G color kind of dominates, um, but really, you know, E, F, G, I would say even H are kind of in a similar grouping, you know, sort of around averaging around eight, 9,000. Um, and, then, and then the lesser columns are D, I, and J. And I'm not sure if there's any quality um, interpretation to be made here, uh, you know, where we would say G is a more desirable color than J or something like that. I don't think that's the case. Uh, but we do have some different counts here. Nothing too stark other than the fact that J is, is fair, fairly low. Uh, and then we can do the same thing for clarity as well. Let's go ahead and put in a, a plot for clarity. And we'll have a look at that. And so we get uh, kind of a nice, uh, another nice bar plot. Notice right off the bat that the I1 is very, very small. Uh, really not, not a lot of those. Similar for IF, uh, pretty small, especially compared to these, these two towers right in the middle, uh, which, are, which are quite tall. Okay, so we see that kind of the S, the S1 and the VS2 sort of dominate everything, followed by S12 and VS1. Um, and then perhaps these two could be paired together, and then the IF and, and I1. Um, so that's something I would take away from here is that um, they they're tend to, tends to look like maybe we could group these. Uh, we could potentially group the clarity 
uh, classifications into a smaller number. So we've got eight groupings right now, but really, again, this the two on the end, I1 and IF, might be a grouping where we could group those together. Um, VVS1 and VVS2 could potentially be, be grouped together just in terms of size. Uh, VS1 here and SI2 potentially, and, and then the two taller ones there. Uh, just in terms of what they already bring uh, to the group, we could also group them by their, their uh, letter, their first letter. So, you know, I1 could presumably be grouped with uh, IF2, or excuse me, IF. Uh, the VVs could be grouped together. The Vs and the Ss could, could be grouped together um, just for for kind of some, some contextual background reasoning, they probably represent the, the same thing. Okay, um, so really when we're looking at discrete categorical variables, again, the main thing we're interested in is just the count, how many of each group exist in the data set. Uh, and we're looking for groups that are, that are either um, overrepresented or underrepresented in, in some way. And so we, we kind of have a sense of that now as we look at um, the, the plots for cut, uh, for color, and for, for clarity, we get a sense of which ones are the predominant groupings and which ones are the, are the, less, are, are the less represented uh, groupings for those variables. So that'll do it for this video on discrete variables. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.